dignitaries, participants all over the country, I heartily welcome you all and grateful for taking time to join us today. I request, uh, I would request Mr. Mohammad Rafiq, coordinator workshop, kindly welcome our distinguished guests and participants. Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir, for such a warm welcome address. Continuing with the workshop, I would now request Dr. Mohammad Nazim, our resource person, to give us inputs. In yes, sir. I will give. I will give. I will give. This, sir. It's my honor and privilege to give brief intro of our resource person. Dr. Mohammad Nazim is presently working as associate professor in the Department of Library and Information Science, AMU. He has more than 50 years of experience in teaching, research, and librarianship. He holds a PhD in library and information science for, from Banaras Hindu University and a master's degree in library and information science from AMU. Prior to joining the MU as assistant professor, he spent around nine and a half years at BHU as assistant librarian. He has more than 50 publications to his credit, including many research articles in Emerald Insight, Taylor and Francis, and Algebra Science Journal, and a book on knowledge management from Chandros Publishing and imprint of Algebra USA. He has guided 22 master dissertation and PhD thesis and currently working on a research project, Access to Library for Persons with Disabilities. An investigation into the library facilities and services in India funded by ICSSR under interest scheme. He has been invited as speaker at IFLA Knowledge Management Satellite Conference organized by IFLA, KM Section, and Zeman University at Zeman University, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia on 23rd August 2018. He is currently a member of the editorial board of the Journal of Information a reviewer for Shandos Publishing, BMC Research North, an open access journal from Biomed Central, and DESI DOC Journal of Library and Information Technology. He has also worked as the managing editor for the Journal of Indian Library Association during 2016 and 2019. His research interests include knowledge organization and information retrieval knowledge management, open access to scholarly communication, and bibliometric, centrometric. With this introduction, I would request our resource person, Dr. Muhammad Nazim, kindly proceed. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Fatima. 
and uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Rafiq Saab uh, for inviting me to just uh, share my experience because this is not the lecture just I want to deliver to the participants. This is my own experience that I have gained during my own research. And uh, I am really happy to know that uh, this Bharat Digital Academy is uh, performing a very good job uh, by conducting uh, many uh, such types of programs. And uh, I hope that these programs certainly help our participants to develop uh, the skills, particularly the research publication skills. So I'm really thankful to all the participants and even myself, uh, Professor Mashad Ali PM also just uh, seen that he, uh, he has also joined the workshop. So I'm really uh, thankful to sir, just uh, recommending my name to uh, Rafiq sir for just uh, giving or delivering this uh, uh, lecture related to the publication skills. So uh, because uh, uh, this uh, publication skills is, uh, are very important, particularly among the researchers and faculty members, because uh, <clears throat> it is, uh, even until now it is mandatory that uh, before submit, submitting the PhD thesis, at least one research paper must be published in the UGC listed peer list journals or even uh, the peer reviewed journals. Or even for faculty members, it is a mandatory requirement to just have the sufficient number of publications for the promotion and recruitment. So uh, publication skills are important and uh, publication, uh, research publication is a cycle. It is a process uh, which start from just uh, writing the proposal, a research proposal. Sometimes we need to get the funding from the uh, different funding organizations. So for that, we need to write the research proposal and then we need to submit that proposal. And after some time, we need to defend the proposal so that uh, some amounts, financial uh, benefits can be uh, get from the funding organization. So this is the first stage that we need to write the proposal. And then uh, after acceptance of the proposal, the, the various whole process which start from uh, just developing our conceptual frameworks, uh, research questions, hypothesis, and then collecting, designing the methodology and collecting relevant data for the publications, and then finally uh, presenting the results and discussing the findings. And at the end, we have to just uh, put the conclusions and we need to cite the relevant sources which have been consulted during the writing of the research publication. So today, because it is not possible for me to just cover almost all the facets of the research publication process, but I will try to just uh, cover some important uh, areas which are really important for the researchers. So can I share my PPT? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. So topic uh, which was given to me to speak on uh, today's research publication skills. And uh, uh, this is the outline of the presentation. I will try to cover, not comprehensively, but I will try to touch some of the topics which are listed here, that is developing a plan for publication, uh, writing a literature review, then referencing and choosing the right journals to report the outcome of the publication and navigating the peer review process. So after submitting the journals, we need to just get the, uh, we need to wait for the, uh, the review uh, by the uh, review team. And finally, after publications, we need to just increase the visibility of our research. And this is uh, directly related to the uh, impact of the research. If research is visible to maximum people, then obviously uh, you will get the maximum, uh, more citations and uh, on the basis of the citations, we need to just have uh, uh, calculate the impact of the research, uh, not only the impact of the journal, but, all, but also the impact of the individual uh, research publications. So there are different metrics for calculating the impact of the research publication, but I'm not going to discuss in detail that these metrics, but I will just try to discuss the ways of just uh, promoting the research which has been published. Uh, this PPT is visible? Yes, sir, visible. It's visible. 
Okay, so first of all, uh, the first stage of the publication process is developing a plan for publications. And whenever you are ready to write something, uh, you need to ask some, some questions. Okay, before writing something, you need to ask some questions. And the, some, some of the important questions are just uh, mentioned in this uh, slide. That, that is what is the aim or objective of the publication. So whenever you are planning to write something, the objective must be very clear and objective must be in your mind. So what is the objective of this publication? Why I am going to write this publication? Okay. And uh, after, uh, you should also in the minds, what do you hope to achieve? Okay. After, suppose you are writing the paper or uh, there may be different uh, forms of uh, research publications. Research publications may be the... Mm -hmm. It may be the thesis, dissertations, this, uh, project reports. So try to understand there may be research publications. Okay, so not only research paper, but maybe the thesis, maybe the dissertations, maybe the uh, projects. So all are come under the category of research. Category of research. So you need to understand. Uh, uh, you need to understand the uh, the objective of the publications and what you will achieve uh, by uh, just publishing your research. And who is the target audience for this research publication? Because whenever you write something, the target audience should be should in your mind. Otherwise, you cannot just justify what you are going to write. Okay, so the label of the audience should be very clear in your mind. Then only you can just make a plan for writing something. And what is the correct channel to reach your audience? Okay, how you can reach to the audience, there may be different ways, just like you can publish your research in the journals, Journal. and then maximum, you can reach to the maximum people. Okay, uh, because uh, uh, the journal, if it, the journal is uh, uh, disciplinary in nature, then the maximum uh, users can uh, use your, uh, uh, and uh, view your uh, research outcome. So these are the important questions that you need to ask yourself before starting, uh, start writing a research publication. So uh, you need to just prepare the res uh, research publication. Is there any problem? Uh, there is some disturbance, I think. Participants are please request it. Kindly mute their mic. So that there will be no world disturbance from your site and it will have been smooth conduct of workshop. Okay. So, request it, why is disturbance? So you need to make a plan or you need to just develop a research uh, publication strategy. Uh, a good research process should go through uh, some of the important steps. First of all, you need to decide the topic on which you are going to write. So deciding the topic is one of the difficult tasks or difficult area because uh, this is uh, directly related to the review of literature that we will discuss in the next uh, point. Okay, so because uh, uh, finding the gap of <laughs> is important. So when you just do the review of literature, then you will be able to identify the gap. And yeah. after identifying the gap, you can just decide the topic on which you can do the research. Then the, your topic should be uh, narrow and uh, uh, this topic uh, should be narrow and uh, you can just make a, 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 a research question. So narrow the topic in order to narrow such parameters. So, this, search parameter, this uh, something uh, wrong with uh, the participants. Is there any problem? I think there is a participant named Zen. Kindly mute, the, mute your mic. Sir, please continue. Sorry, sir. Please continue, sir. So, so you need to just uh, narrow down your topics and so that you can search related, uh, articles which are related to the public, to the public research that you to conduct. Then create a question that your research will address. This is uh, creating a question is important. Uh, there should be a simple statement. And this is not necessary that you just create a research question. It may be a statement of the objective. And this is called the major objective of the research that you are going to conduct. So uh, there should be a major objective, so major research question that you need to identify before starting work on the particular publication or research publication. 
and after that you can just draw some more specific uh, research questions and objectives for example you can just uh, try to formulate a, a statement that this study aims to examine something okay examine the use of social media among uh, school going children okay so just suppose you want to just uh, investigate the use of social media among school going children so a single statement need to be formulated that uh, this study aims to examine or investigate the use of social media among student among school going students now you can add something more school going students uh, of a legal uh, of a, a legal or a particular uh, you can add more districts so that you can define your the scope of the uh, research so a single statement may be created and after that you can just try to formulate some uh, specific research objectives and research questions and uh, that will help you to just generate some sub questions from your own your main questions so there should be one main question or objective that is called major objective of the research and then you can just create sub questions or objective that we can say the specific objective of the research question, uh, of your research then determine what kind of sources are best for your argument so this is important because uh, you need to consult a large number of sources at the time of writing your research or your your publication your publication may be theoretical or your it may be reviewed based on review or it may be the research publication that is based on the data which you have collected from the respondents or from any any other source so there may be different kinds of publications so for uh, i am not going in, uh, into the detail of uh, every kinds of publications i am just talking about the general uh, publications and maybe research or the theoretical or review so determine what kinds of sources are best for your argument suppose you are just putting an argument and it is the theoretical aspects of your paper then you need to consult the relevant sources for putting or justifying a particular idea or argument then at the end you need to just create a bibliography as you gather and uh, reference sources okay so uh, whatever the sources you have consulted at the time of just developing an idea of your research all the uh, references should be organized and it is when you when all the references are organized it's uh, called the bibliography so this bibliography is important because you need to consult this bibliography whenever you are just searching uh, a relevant publication for writing a particular content for research so uh, the, uh, the important thing is that you you need to understand uh, the structure of research paper so the structure, the structure may be vary from journal to journals and from, and from one, uh, one kind of publication to other kind. To other kind. so uh, but i have just included in this slide almost all, almost all the research publication uh, there may be some points missing to a particular time and uh, this is i think some somebody is intentionally creating the problems you need to identify someone which is creating this types of problem so this is a participant name zen not participant this is i think not a participant it is intentionally someone in which was trying to create the problem i request uh, mr uh, sir rafiq sir can you remove this was uh, this participant name zen remove from the from the uh, sorry sir sorry sir sorry sir sorry sir so this is intentionally someone creating the problem Okay, so I I believe so. I believe so. I to identify. Please proceed, sir. Please proceed. So uh, these are the maximum points that I have, I have included in the uh, in the, in this slide, but uh, uh, not necessary that you need to include all the points in the, in your research paper. This depends on the requirements of the journals because the different types of journals and publishers require different types of uh, things. so uh, for, but some of the important thing that is uh, that is necessary for all types of publications i just uh, want to highlight here that is title and cover page so you need to create a title page where you the title of your research 
and in the title page you just try to provide the name of the authors and address their phone number contact detail email all these things so you need to prepare the abstract but this abstract is prepared at the end of the publication when when the uh, writing of uh, publication is completed but uh, the i am just uh, mentioned the points in the sequence that is why the abstract is come but uh, abstract is written at the end of the uh, when the publication is completed is completed okay. then uh, your paper is start with the introduction and statement of uh, problem so whenever you are doing research you need to identify your research problem so that you can solve the problems by just we are gathering data and analyzing data and testing the hypothesis so a good introduction state the main research problem and thesis argument including research questions and hypothesis so this is part of the research paper here you are where you provide the background information about the topic then try to define your research problem and then you need to just may uh, prove the research questions and the objectives as well as if there is some there are some research questions and hypothesis so all these things are not necessary to be given in the uh, introductory part so in some studies you need to include research questions in some studies you need to include only the objectives and in some studies you can include hypothesis and objectives so this depends on the nature of the publication that you are going to write then you need to define the scope and limitations of the study because everything cannot be exam uh, examined or investigated due to the uh, limitations of the time as well as the financial finance or mo mo money because you need to spend uh, uh, money for collecting data you need to visit places and you uh, for you need uh, time so it is important that you need to just define the scope and the limitation of the study what are the things which you have included and what what are the things which you have in excluded from the study it should be clearly mentioned in the in your study then conceptual framework is important but it is not necessary that in all the research publications in all types of publications this research con this conceptual framework is given okay so conceptual framework uh, is uh, important but not necessary to be uh, provided in each types of publication so conceptual framework is basically the depiction of uh, the re the relationship between independent and dependent variables and you need to identify different independent variables suppose if you are uh, putting or formulating the hypothesis in your research publications then this uh, conceptual from framework highlight different kinds of independent variables and dependent variables because hypothesis testing require the relationship between the independent and dependent variables and <laughs> define different uh, independent and dependent variables clearly the next part is the methods and material and where you need to define the methods explain the methods what types of method what uh, methods you have adopted and what is the sampling process how you have collected uh, decided the sample so all these things come into the part of the method and then material sometimes we need materials like uh, data from different sources maybe secondary sources maybe primary sources through questionnaire through observation so there there may be different ways methods of collecting data so you need to define the whole process of collecting data your methodology should be very very descriptive descriptive means it sh it should mention the whole process how you have collected data so the whole process need to be described very clearly so that someone else can replicate so that is this is called replication of research this research if somebody want to do the same types of study on different sample or different populations so your methodology will be helpful to others so today we have the concept of open science where it is it is uh, mandatory or it is just uh, pupils are promoting that your research materials as well as research methods should be clearly defined so that other people can follow your methodology to conduct similar types of studies on different kinds of population then the la then the next is the results where you need to report the results whatever the data you have collected you have analyzed then you, this data need to be presented and analyzed and we just give the interpretation in the results section and 
one important component is not mentioned here i forget just uh, putting that in, uh, component that is a review of literature that i need to discuss also in the in, in the uh, coming slides so there should be a more component in this uh, slide that is a review of literature so review of literature is important because uh, uh, after reviewing the relevant literature related to the topic you need to identify the gap in the research so you consulted a large number of sources of, of different of, of different nature and uh, this uh, literature review is also important at the time of discussing the findings in the discussion section so discussion section at least consists of three different parts at the beginning you need to just highlight your finding that is the major findings of the study in the second part you need to just correlate your findings with the findings of uh, earlier researches which you have just given in the review of literature part and in the third in the in the last part of the discussion you just try to highlight very important aspect that uh, or the important outcome of your research so this is <clears throat> the discussion section and then practical implications means the findings of the your study how the findings of your study are important and useful for different stakeholders different stakeholders means for different, for the society for the students for the administrations depending upon the nature of your research so these practical implications are important to be given if you are not providing this section somewhere in the discussion part or conclusion part then uh, at a time of review of your paper uh, the reviewer will make the comment that you need to include this important section in the in the research publication at the end you need to give the conclusion your conclusion should be very brief and this conclusion should be based on your findings okay this is this is very important other things cannot be included your conclusion should not be generalized it should be depends on or based on the findings of your study and at the end you need to provide a list of all the sources which you have consulted during the writing of your research that is called references or for giving the references we need to follow the standard we will discuss in the relevant sections related to the uh, list of references so the next important thing that i just mentioned in the plan of the uh, my uh, presentation that is writing review literature review so a literature review first of all we need to know what is a literature review literature review is an objective concise and critical summary of the previous previous research relevant to the topic which you are going to uh, conduct so this is uh, you need to uh, just write the review of literature and this is the important component of the research because uh, uh, this is the foundation of the research because you are just developing your whole research process on the basis of the literature review so we need to write a review in a research publication what is the need of writing the review, the review literature some of the points are important that i will just try to explain to provide a comprehensive foundation on a topic so uh, without giving the sufficient literature uh, the foundation is not built that uh, that is foundation of your research cannot be developed so you need to include sufficient relevant up to date literature related to the your, related to your topics you need to identify the related studies in different sources and then you need to provide a, a summary of the studies not only the summary it is a critical summary of uh, the studies which are related to your own research to explain the current state of knowledge because uh, uh, i just mentioned that there are different types of publications one of them is uh, uh, review article so if uh, review articles are written for just uh, uh, knowing the state of art in a particular area so this is based on the uh, uh, secondary data because we are not conducting our own uh, survey and we are just depends on the earlier data of earlier studies so if you want to know the current state of arts of a particular subject then this review is important to identify gaps in existing studies for potential future research this is uh, one of the important points that after uh, reviewing the literature you will be able to understand that these are the different areas which have been uh, covered by the researchers but this area is not covered by the researchers so i can 
do research in this area and this is the gap of the research so identifying the uh, the gap in the research is possible only when you do the review of literature and to highlight the main methodology and research techniques which have been adopted in the previous studies okay so you will be able to get an idea about the methodology and techniques which have been used in a particular kinds of studies so you can follow the same patterns same, same techniques and same methods for conducting your own research so this review of literature will give will give you a, an idea of doing uh, research how we can do the research how we can conduct the research you can just understand the methodologies and techniques so there are some tips for good uh, literature review so what we need to do we need to strike a balance uh, between sources supporting and opposing a particular aspect or argument so not necessarily you can just uh, collect the literature and put the literature in the review part that is just support the, uh, supporting the argument you need to take both the facets that is opposing and support uh, and supporting the arguments that you are you want to discuss in your research provide enough information which is required on the subject sufficient information need to be included in the review and that is uh, 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 most of the people what most of the people do whatever they easily find in uh, they can put into the review of literature part if the if the uh, literature is not accessible and not available to them they just uh, not include, include in their uh, review part so this is not a good habit you need to identify sufficient literature if you are not able to access that literature because there are certain limitations uh, uh, for some some researchers because they are not able to uh, get the access to maximum resources because their libraries are not, not subscribing the databases and good number of journals then what they do they just try to include only those things which are easily available so don't uh, do these types of things try to find all the relevant literature wherever it is available and try to uh, collect there are different methods because today it is not a time to discuss how if you are not able to get access to different kinds of literature literature so what are the ways of uh, searching or finding that literature so uh, i cannot discuss because of the uh, limitation of the time but there are some possibilities and uh, there are some solutions to this problem the important thing is that you need to include all the relevant literature which is related to the to your topic eliminate uh, just uh, try to uh, eliminate uh, the irrelevant information from your research only related or relevant information or relevant sources need to be included in the study irrelevant sources may be removed from the review of literature part include uh, relevant authority uh, authoritative and peer reviewed sources this is also important because uh, in response to a search on google whatever you go, uh, get you can you you just try to include into the review of literature this is not a good habit you need to just include only peer reviewed sources author, authoritative uh, sources or relevant sources okay so this is there are certain parameters for the evaluation of the authenticity and the quality of the publications so you need to identify those parameters and you need to review each publications before including in a, a particular publication into your own research address clearly research questions objective and the theoretical framework so what you need to do you need to organize your uh, review of literature according to the research questions or hypothesis or objectives of your study so there it means that your literature review should be organized into different themes or sub themes so that all the important aspects which you are going to cover in your research should be should be covered identify studies and models that support support your topic so you need to identify some studies and uh, some models if this is not applicable to all types of reviews but if you are using a particular model then there you need to find the studies which are related to that particular aspect define key terms terminology and definitions uh, if there is a new term and uh, you are using in the research this term need to be defined clearly a uh, build a strong foundation for your research topic so when you are doing a good review of literature then this foundation can easily be built there is no problem so these are the important tips that you need to note down and at the time of reviewing the studies that to be included in your own research
in the review of literature part. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Yes, sir, please go ahead. Okay. Please. So uh, there are different steps which uh, can be followed uh, during the writing of review of literature. First of all, we need to choose a topic, define your research questions and objectives. That is, we have already discussed in detail. And research questions should be manageable, not too broad, not too narrow. We have already discussed, not necessary to repeat. And begin writing down terms that are relevant to, related to your questions. These will be useful for, uh, for searches later. So uh, whatever the themes or research questions you have identified or important, important terms related to the themes you have identified, you need to note down these terms because these terms are useful for you when you are going to search the literature from different databases and from different journals. Decide on the scope of your of your review. So this is also important. There may be some rich topics. Some there may be some uh, 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 topic may not be rich. Rich in the sense that some topics may have a, a large amount of literature. Some topics may have a very limited uh, literature. So if there if a topic where uh, you find maximum literature, then you need to just decide the scope of your review. This scope maybe depends on how many studies do you need to look at. Kitni studies aap apne research review literature mein dalna chahte hain. 100, koi to number hoga. You need to decide the number. At least 100, 200, 50, whatever, which you can easily manage. How comprehensive should it be? Kitna isko aap uh, uh, bada banana chahte hain. And you can delimit your uh, number of studies uh, on the basis of uh, the coverage that is the year. You can select the studies uh, during the particular time frame. Okay, so because you are doing research, so it is better to just uh, uh, try to collect the literature which is recent publications. Okay, old publications are not recommended. So try to collect the literature which is published recently. So start from the current and go to the uh, old literature. Okay, whenever uh, when you will reach to the manageable uh, number of studies, then you can stop there. So this is the um, way of just managing or deciding the scope of your review. Then you need to select the sources or databases where from you can find the literature. Okay, so there are many databases. Uh, some of the important are Scopus, Web of Science, and uh, Submit central and for different areas for different subjects, there are different kinds of databases which are available. But prominent uh, databases are Web of Science and uh, Scopus. So you can uh, search uh, relevant literature from these databases. These databases are basically uh, uh, having the good coverage. Uh, uh, around uh, more than twenty-five thousand journals are covered in the Scopus uh, database, and around ten thousand journals are included in the Web of Science database. Besides uh, these two databases, there is another. Uh, there is a, there are some other tools like the Google Scholar, uh, where you can find a large number of sources which are not even included in the Web of Science and Scopus database. So, depending upon the requirements of number of studies that you want to include in your review, you can just uh, Select the appropriate databases and sources collecting relevant articles and sources for the review of literature. Collect all the scholarly information on the topic that might be pertinent to your study. So uh, that is uh, after collecting the literature, the next thing is to se the selection. Everything cannot be included. So obviously, you need to select. Carefully select and only include scholarly information. Scholarly means they may be published in the journals, in the conference proceedings like this. So uh, suppose blogs and uh, information available on Wikipedia or on, on particular websites. So these types of uh, information is not considered as a scholarly uh, information. So try to remember that you need to just include or collect scholarly information. Read the selected articles thoroughly and evaluate them. So the important thing, the golden rule is that they spend good amount of time on reading before writing a review. So reading is important after collecting and selecting the relevant articles. The next stage is just to start write, reading and noting down the important things. <clears throat> 
so what are the important things that you need to note down assumptions some of some or most uh, researchers seems to make methodologies testing procedures subject material tested all these things you note, note down at the time of reading the previous studies so first thing is to uh, select the source then collect the information particularly scholarly information then try to select the appropriate sources that you want to include in your review then start reading and then note down in the important things uh, that is that are discussed in the previous studies then you need to organize the selected paper by looking for patterns and by developing subtopics that is uh, findings that are common and contested that to be noted down important trends in the research that need to be noted down and the most influential influential theories that to be noted down so these things are highlighted in the review of literature part that is why you need to note down these important aspects during the reading of the literature you will just try to note down these things describe and summarize each article provide the essential information of the article that pertain to your study and finally you need to organize the reviews in your review of literature part and this organization is basically uh, maybe chronological maybe thematic and maybe methodological okay so chronological means if you are just arranging the reviews in the review of literature according to the year of publications of each study it is called the chronological arrangement okay so you can put the recent studies and first and then go to uh, the older studies and you can just uh, put the uh, the older studies at the beginning and put the recent studies at the end so this is chronological and thematic means that i already mentioned that uh, you need to identify the themes uh, uh, of the review of literature depend based on the research questions and research ob objective of your study so thematic review is relevant you need to uh, organize or put the the studies which are relevant to a particular theme in one sub theme okay so this is thematic and within thematic uh, uh, organizations you can also follow the chronological pattern okay so this is also possible so this organization is in, that is uh, chronological is not very much relevant you need to use thematical organization where put a relevant studies under a particular theme and then arrange a, a, a specific reviews according to the year of publication so thematic chronological uh, method is more important or uh, for organizing the uh, reviews in the literature of review part then finally uh, you need to develop a gap of research statement at the end of the review of literature part you need to give us a statement which in which mention or which describe the gap of research that you have identified so how you can write this gap statement you can just discuss several studies has been conducted on this area some of the studies cover this aspect some of the studies cover this aspect some of the studies cover this level of population some of the studies cover this level of population but no study has covered this aspect that we are going to discover okay so you need to identify the research gap and you need to define or need to develop a gap of research statement at the end of your review of literature part that is important because otherwise if you are not mentioning the gap you are not able to identify the gaps so what is the important of your study if the, the similar kinds of studies have already been conducted so why we are going to uh, conduct the same types of studies so our research gap need to be identified on which you need to do the research okay now the next thing is referencing uh, because there are more things but not possible to discuss due to the limitation of time so i wish i will just discuss the referencing part referencing is important because uh, first of all we need to know what is the referencing referencing is a way of acknowledging other pupils work okay so whatever the ideas or the concept which is uh, given by other pupils need, we can include in our own study but we need to properly cite them okay otherwise you uh, this, uh, your work will be considered as plagiarized by so uh, there, there is no problem you can just uh, acknowledge the pupil how uh, this, this is a good thing 
okay so you referencing is the way of acknowledging other pupils work if you are using the work of other pupil you can acknowledge that we have taken this uh, conceptual idea from that particular study uh, contributed by that particular author so this is a good habit that you need to just acknowledge the work of other people that you are going to include in your own study referencing is used to make clear to the reader then you are bringing ideas words quotes illustration acts concepts or anything from other sources into your own assignments or your own research papers chahe wo koi idea ho chahe koi words aap le rahe ho chahe koi illustrations ho koi concept ho agar aap kahin se bhi le rahe hain kisi se bhi le rahe hain to you need to acknowledge you need to cite the source from where you are taking this particular idea this is very important otherwise uh, your work may be considered as plagiarized work so good referencing show you you have done the reading around that and know the key ideas you should be referring to so this is a good habit not a bad habit because what is, what what most of the people do they just try to collect the literature from different sources and put organize it into one and just claim that this is our own work so this is not because you need to cite you need to acknowledge the, the work of other people that you are including in your in, in your own study okay so proper referencing is important and you must have the knowledge of uh, referencing referencing means not just giving the reference referencing means there are certain rules and regulations how much word we can take as such when we need to quote the in double inverted comma okay so this is all the things are defined in different uh, referencing styles so uh, researchers must have the knowledge about uh, the referencing system so that uh, they can just avoid uh, the any kind of plagiarism in their own research so why do we cite and uh, reference give the reference in the in the in our study give the original author credit to their own ideas and work we need to give the credit okay even you are taking a table illustration any figure or any structure from somewhere you need to acknowledge that this source has been taken from this particular study validate your arguments okay if you are just validating your arguments then you can take the help of the previous studies and the uh, and the idea which is which you are taking from other other people okay enable the reader to follow up the original work in, uh, if they wish to enable uh, suppose uh, you are giving the reference then uh, with the help of the reference uh, the reader can go to the original source which you have consulted okay so so and today we are using uh, that is the doi and uh, the link uh, in the in the reference part so you can easily connect to the original uh, research which you have consulted enable the reader to see how dated the information might be that is uh, the currency and the relevancy of the information for the readers can be determined prove that you have read around the subjects this also prove that you have uh, just uh, conducted a good research that you have already consulted a large number of studies and built the foundations on the subjects and then you have start writing so giving the reference means the value of your research may be increased and then you, this will help you to just avoid the plagiarism so we need to familiar as a researcher we need to familiar with the different referencing styles these are there are different referencing styles some of the important are the harvard apa and chicago and uh, there are different kinds of different publishers and journals following different patterns and different referencing styles so whenever you are writing something or you are going to write something then you sh should have an idea of the journal in which you are going to communicate you must have an idea about the institutions where you are submitting a particular thesis or dissertation and then you need to consult the guidelines of publications of that publisher or that institutions and accordingly you need to cite the Uh, studies and give the references at the end of the research papers so before uh, writing something you must have an idea about the use of a particular referencing style by a particular journal or publisher or institutions the choice of reference system vary from subject to subject 
institution to institution and journal to journal and tutor to tutor that is uh, the your supervisor may follow different styles so the supervisor of other research scholars may fi- may follow the different referencing style so you must be very much uh, familiar with the styles that is uh, basically required for uh, by the particular publishers and in particular subjects and in particular institution so i am just g- giving a very brief of overview not possible to discuss in detail the complete the process of referencing by different referencing styles like apa or chicago here one reference is given and in the referencing there are two component in text and full reference these uh, two components are there in text means in the text of the paper you need to just quote a particular author and according to the harvard uh, referencing style you need to give the surname of the author comma year of publication of that particular paper and colon that is the page number on which this particular idea is mentioned so suppose this is the studies by davis published in 2007 and this particular idea which is written one percent critic went whatever this is available on page number 36 and the next thing is full reference and at the end of the publications under the list of references you provide complete reference that is davis surname a or name year of publication in bracket then the title then the name of the editor in which this particular paper chapter or article published and the name of the titles and uh, the publisher and all these things are given in the reference so there are two components in the referencing in text where you need to give the author name surname of the author year of publication and page number and at the end of the publication you give the full reference and the with the patterns of giving the reference according to harvard uh, referencing style is given this is part one kind of publication basically there are different patterns for different kinds of publications for example for book there is different pub- pattern for journal article there is different pa- pa- pattern for conference proceeding articles there is different pattern so you need to learn the pattern the patterns of different kinds of sources that you have consulted and you have used in the in your own research so today because we are using online <coughs> sources uh, so for that what we need to do we need to give uh, uh, online in square bracket and we need to write available at www jo bhi uska link hai jahan se aapko wo source mila hai website pe uska link aap denge and at the end you just mention the date of access kis date mein aapne wo search kiya tha wo date bhi aap mention karenge so in case of an online source that you have consulted you need to give uh, in square bracket online then you need to provide the link where from you have searched this particular source and you also mention the date on which you have consulted this particular source okay because the sources uh, which are available on the websites then may be changed time to time so that is why the date is very important in online publications today we are using some uh, digital tools for referencing and uh, there are some uh, reference management software or tools like like zotero and mendeley and they basically allow not only just giving the referencing but also you can organize whole so all the sources which you are going to consult you can collect and store uh, pdf using this software and tag annotate highlight and take notes of on the articles you can just highlight some of the portions which are very important and that you want to use in your own study so you can highlight that particular portion and you can search your collection which you have stored using this software and at the end you can create a bibliography so the this is uh, this work is very typical but it become very easy if you are just using this software so there is uh, i think there is a need of conducting a separate workshop to learn how to use zotero and mendeley for creating the bibliographies and giving the citations not possible to cover in in a one hour all the things okay i am just giving a brief, brief overview about the about the referencing now uh, can i uh, continue uh, rafiq sir main isko continue karu because time to aapke aapne jo mujhe diya tha now it is 
Yes, okay. sir. Please continue. Please continue. So, so now the next. हाँ जरूर जरूर ले लेंगे इसको भी. Uh, choose the right journals. Now your paper is ready. You have just completed the paper for publications. The next thing is you need to just uh, submit your uh, research paper or your research articles in a particular in a journal. So selection of journals is important because there are large number of journals which are available in different subject area, and there are many predatory journals and uh, that is uh, low quality journals and paid journals and. that is called uh, you need to pay for uh, publication uh, you need to pay money for publication so there there may be different kinds of journals available so you need to find a relevant authentic uh, journals in which you need to report your research so what you can do for that you can make a list of uh, all the important journals in a particular subject area and then try to find the best one which meet the Uh, which is in accordance with your uh, the nature of your research determine the impact of the journal this is another important criteria that you want to publish your research in high impact journal make sure that general scope and policies match your needs okay so you need to just uh, before select uh, selecting the journals to uh, read the policies and scope of the journal this is important otherwise what uh, what is uh, the possibility that you have submitted your paper for publication and after 15 days and one month you receive the mail that your article is not related to the scope of our journal so unnecessary you have wasted one month so before submitting your paper you need to identify the scope and policies of the journal otherwise your time will be wasted okay check the general requirement and distribution what is the requirement of the journal what types of things are required what types of formatting is required what is the gap between two lines okay what is the font size what is the font size of the uh, heading and sub headings all these things are basically mentioned in the author guidelines of the journal so make sure you, ne you need to read the, uh, read all the things all the requirements kon kon si files ki zarurat hoti hai you need to prepare a separate file for the article text you need to prepare a separate file for for the title page you need to prepare separate files for figures and tables so this is depends on the requirements of different kinds of publishers and journals to so make sure that you have already consulted the authors guidelines and the requirements of the journals collect information about the journals peer review process this is also important because uh, there is uh, Uh, peer review means blind peer peer review and uh, there are uh, at least three reviewers are selected for reviewing your art paper sometimes some journals follow two uh, use uh, just uh, uh, use two reviewers some may be one reviewers so this is also important for you if there are three reviewers in a particular journals so obviously it is the quality may be very high and you need to uh, in, uh, you need to just uh, follow the comments of three uh, reviewers at the time of uh, improving or editing your papers after the recommendations so check uh, the instructions for author thoroughly this is important because all the details are given in the instructions for authors of different journals then selection of journals uh, based on impact impact means uh, that is not impact factor because there is a only one Uh, source that is jcr general citation reports where uh, a list of journals are uh, provided with impact factors but there are some other uh, sources like uh, cimego general rank sjr uh, and uh, general citation report that i mentioned them for it fine knowing the uh, impact factor of the journal and google scholar matrix so these are the uh, metrics which tells you the importance of the journal in your own subject area ab mere paas time nahi otherwise main is pe click karunga to ye khul jayenge to aapko pata lag jayega ki kaun sa journal ki kya rank hai usi hisab se aap decide kar sakte hain to if you want to just select the quality journals for publication of your research then these three important sources can be consulted to know the impact of these journals high impact journal means the high quality of the journals article then another uh, methods of selection of journals relevant journal based on content to your, your papers so to, uh, most of the publishers basically provide a platform 
by different names like Elsevier's Journal Finder, Springer Journal Suggester, Billet Journal Finder, or Taylor and Francis Journal Suggester. So if you go to the websites of these uh, uh, publishers, then they just provide you a platform where you can put your title of the research paper, abstract, and then search. Then you, they will provide a list of journals which can match with your with, with your research. Okay, four or five journals will tell you which will be appropriate for you, which you can submit your findings to your paper. So submit your paper. So you can also uh, consult these uh, journal finder and suggester, and they will. You just need to put the titles of the research paper and abstract into the search box, and then just click on search. Then you will find a, a list of journals which may be relevant to your uh, your paper or your research. Now this is navigating the peer, peer review process, and uh, after uh, submission of the journals, then you need to wait for the decision. That is the whole review process. Okay, after uh, meeting the all the necessary requirements by the journals, the editor select or appoint two or three, depending upon the policy of individual journals, the reviewer, and send your articles to the reviewer for comments. Okay, so what is uh, peer review is designed to assess the validity, quality, and often the originality of articles for publication. So this peer review process is very important for the scholarly uh, communication or scholarly publications because at least two or three people uh, of the uh, who are the experts of that particular area review the uh, review your uh, manuscripts and your publications, and after the suggestions and the recommendations of the reviewer, uh, then only the your article is accepted. Okay, so what is the process of review? Involve an exchange between the journal editor and the team of reviewers who are expert in, in a particular area. Evaluation of scientific validity, originality, and research significance, and making recommendations. Finally, on the basis of review, they just make the recommendations, and recommendations may be acceptance or rejection. There may be two possibilities. So recommendations may be in the form of unconditional acceptance. That is, no change are required before publication. Whatever you have submitted. It may be accepted as such. There is no need of any change. Conditional ac acceptance means minor revision is required. So minor revisions are required before publication. So they suggest that you need to do the minor changes in your articles before publications in the journal. Then another aspect is major revision is required. Sometimes major revisions is required. Then you need to do the major changes in your manuscript before uh, publications. And sometimes it may be rejected. Okay, Condex conditional rejection means the journal will consider publishing the article only after it is revised and resubmitted for another round of peer review. So these are the possibilities. You will receive the email from the journal editor that your article has been accepted without any change. Your article has been accepted uh, with the condition that you need to make the minor changes. Your article has been uh, accepted with the condition that you have to do the major changes in your articles and sometimes your article may be rejected so we are not uh, very much uh, happy when we receive the mail like rejection mail are not basically welcomed by the researchers so kabhi bhi rejection mail aata hai to zahir si baat hai thoda sa isi ke liye bhi wo acha nahi hota so before uh, submitting your articles you need to just verify all the important things so that your article may not be rejected reason for rejecting of rejection of articles, there may be two types of reasons. Uh, uh, that is technical issues and their content issues. The technical issues, the reviewer detected plagiarism in the article. If there is a, a similarity level is high, then your article may be rejected. The article is currently being reviewed by another journal. Some people, what, what some people do, they try to submit articles in more than two, one journal. Okay, so <clears throat> if it is detected that you have already submitted your articles in another journal, then your article will be rejected. Formal component or section. Sometimes your uh, structure of the article is not in accordance with the structure of the journal. Then your article will be rejected. The word count is too high or too low because there is a range of the words which may be included in the publication. So ten thousand, nine thousand, six thousand, depending upon the policies of the journal. So if the word count is more or less, then your article may be rejected. 
there is there may be problems of the english language because uh, for, mo for most of the researchers particularly indian researchers and uh, in this sub subcontinents there is a problem of uh, technical english language so in, if the language is not proper then the article may be rejected the figure and tables are of poor quality and uh, there are other uh, problems of the formatting or formatting problems you are not just making the formatting in accordance with the journals tech content issue means there is some problems in the contents of the article that is outside the scope and research interest of the journal that i have mentioned that you need to verify the scope before submitting the paper the author failed to consider other relevant studies in the area of research the research aim was not established or not meet because you have just defined the research problem at the beginning but at the end you have not able to defend that uh, that research problem okay so the research was incomplete and there is not sufficient data to just justify or to just uh, make the conclusion so these may be the uh, the reason uh, the the, um, uh, the the reasons of uh, uh, rejecting the papers in in a particular journal responding to reviewers comment when you receive the comments from the reviewers for just uh, major or minor revisions so you need to uh, remember three golden rules answer completely whatever the points which have raised by the reviewers you need to address all the points positively completely answer politely aapko gussa nahi aana chahiye aapko lag raha nahi hai kyunki wo jo reviewer hai sometimes not able to understand you are thinking that i am my point is correct and the reviewer is not able to understand so you need to give the justification very politely okay answer with evidence whatever the answer you are giving to the uh, response uh, reviewers comment it should be based on the evidence at the time of revision of your paper as well as just giving the response to each comment of the reviewer aisa nahi khali aapne revision kar liya har point ko aapko justify karna hoga ki humne ye kiya humne ye kiya all these things you need to just mention in the response to reviewers comment remain objective in your response wait at, uh, at least two days before you respond to the uh, reviewers comment read through your reviewers comment carefully and reassess the possible shortcoming of your of your articles and this weakness see weakness and opportunity to improve so this is basically <clears throat> review process is very important for improving the quality of your uh, research papers if you are just incorporating important suggestions given by the reviewers then ultimately the, the quality of the paper may be improved so what you need to do you need to give uh, you need to make a table where you need to give the comment number jo comment reviewer ne diya hai uska number bhi ho sakta hai ya point bhi ho sakta hai uh, this section contains grammatical errors this is the comment of the reviewer thank you for drawing our attention to this errors they have been corrected page number 3 so you need to give the response to each comment of the reviewer in in such format okay where you need to mention the comment number if there there is comment number if the comment number is not there so you can remove this particular column you give the reviewer comments give your response and you need to mention the page number on which you have made the corrections after getting the Uh, comment from the reviewer okay then try to understand that uh, reviewers reviews are advice and not compulsory so this this is the advice all the things cannot be included okay sometimes you are not able to incorporate each and everything which is suggested by the reviewer so you just politely uh, write in the response that we have included this this but this thing is not possible to incorporate for example sometimes we received the uh, the response from the recommend from the reviewer they mentioned that the sample size is very low to aap sample size ko to nahi bada sakte na aap kaise badhayenge it is you need to conduct another study you need to do the whole exercise again so that is not possible so you need to justify that we have taken this sample in this particular circumstances and it is not possible to just expand our sample at this particular stage so is tarah ke comment jo possible na ho usko aap politely usko justify kar sakte hain 
be respectful be responsive and polite and thorough in your response now this is the final part uh, i think you, <laughs> i have taken much time this is that to how to increase research visibility so now you your article has been published the next thing is to increase the visibility of your research because jo dikhta hai wo bikhta hai this is the basic principles okay so jitni aapki research visibility hogi utna hi uska impact hoga impact in terms of number of times people view your articles read your articles cite your articles so you will receive maximum citations if your research is visible to maximum number of people so how you can just increase the visibility of your research publication there are certain tips certain uh, uh, things that you need to remember you need to create a orsid id that is called unique author identif identifier this is the unique author identifier you need to create you need to go to the orsid websites and just create your id and you will uh, you will uh, your work will be automatically added to this profile and the whole world will see the see your profile okay <clears throat> so this is this uh, obviously increase the visibility of your research share output of your research at subject or institutional repositories and personal websites whenever your article is published you try to put your articles on some subject or institutional repository in accordance with the policy of the publisher okay you cannot put the final pdf version of the articles because of this is uh, that the copyright issues or whatever but a draft which is finalized before publications can be uploaded to the institutional repository or subject repository or at your own personal web page there are certain popular uh, institute, subject institutional repositories that is archives in the field of computer uh, physics mathematics computer science which is maintained by cornell university library sites here in the field of information science and computer science pubmed central in the field of medical science and social science research network in the field of social science so these are the popular there are a large number of repositories where you can put your work but these are the important and very popular repositories where you can put your research you can upload your research and it is publicly available to the people everyone can see and use your research and cite your research so this is uh, this can increase the visibility of your research then you can share research data that is sharing research data i means uh, whatever the data you have collected and analyzed and uh, in your study this data may be shared uh, in different uh, data repositories and open science framework provide a very comprehensive uh, database where uh, the researchers can upload their data and you can also find data of other people to use in your own study so try to go to the websites of open science science framework and i i have very limited time otherwise i will just uh, click this to uh, if this link and the page will be open so you can note down that open science framework uh, you need to register there and you can use the data which is collected by other people other researchers and you can also upload your own research data into this particular repository or platform create and keep up to date online profiles you need to create certain profiles like google scholar citation profile you can create a profile at loop that is open science research network creating profile means all the work will be visible to pupils and uh, you uh, the other scholars may be known known about uh, about your research so you can create a google scholar citation profile you can create profile at loop and you can just create a profile at impact story to just uh, calculate the uh, metrics that is number of download number of times a particular article viewed by different researchers so uh, these are the different platforms where you can just sometimes you need to put your work into the repositories or a particular platforms sometimes you need to create a different profiles research your profiles where you can just show high a show case your research so that other people came to know about your publications and can use and your publication that certainly increase the your impact impact of your research last but not least this is i know i hope that uh, this is uh, you are familiar to these platforms engage in social networking communities 
and ResearchGate, Academia, LinkedIn, and Mendeley. These are different platforms where you can upload your research and it is visible to different pupils uh, around the world. <clears throat> and one thing is more, more important that is choose open access mode of publishing. Open access mode of publishing means if you are publishing your research in open access journals, then there is no restriction. It is publicly available to all the people. There is no need of subscribing that particular source in the lab by the researchers. But uh, if you are publishing in a quality open access journals, then you need to make the payment of article processing charges, APC. And this is will and comfortable in our context, particularly in, in Indian context, because uh, uh, we are not in a position to pay article processing charges in, in dollars and pounds. And uh, this is uh, really very difficult for us to just pay. So the government of India <clears throat> developed uh, a draft science and uh, technology and innovation policy where they have proposed one nation and one, one subscription policy but it is not finalized and it is not implemented one nation and one subscription policy means where the government will negotiate the publishers and make available all types of research publications or journals to all the pupils of the country but this is not feasible i, I think it is not possible it is a draft and it is not still implemented Thank you very much. Uh, uh, now, you, if you have any question in your mind, you can just discuss. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for such an effective, informative, and valuable inputs from your side. I really appreciate. The participant have any queries? They can unmute or put in the chat box. Okay, Professor Mohammed Muslim. Uh, Am I audible, sir? Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. I'm Dr. Archana Vakta. Yes. This is between a review paper and a research paper. Are the review paper also original? They are also considered as original papers? Or only the research papers are considered uh, original? A review paper uh, and research paper both maybe both are considered as the original paper because review means you are not just giving the review or abstract of the earlier studies you need to just uh, read the whole articles try to find the relevant or, uh, or uh, relevant aspects which are related to your topics and then you are converting these aspects into your own words and organizing into different themes so review articles are also considered as an original research but writing review papers are quite difficult in the uh, writing uh, the research paper or paper based on the survey. Okay, because you need to have the expertise of reviewing uh, the uh, studies contributed by other people. So uh, writing review articles are difficult, but they are considered as the uh, primary uh, or original uh, publications. Okay, so that means apart from uh, reviewing various papers, we have to give our part also. Uh, what uh, our conclusion also uh, can you repeat your question i am not able to understand what yes sir i am telling that uh, in review paper apart from uh, collecting the ideas or uh, matter from various uh, papers we have to um, uh, we have to uh, um, uh, put our uh, our um, our own um, matter also that means our own view also yes mm -hmm. yes 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 because you are you are just uh, correlating you are relating your uh, your view uh, you are supporting your your uh, theme but or the topic which you have selected basically so uh, so you need to collect the studies which are relevant to that particular aspects and then you need to just make a connection between the earlier studies and what you are going to investigate so really this is a very difficult or daunting task but if you are able to do it it is uh, i think very good Okay. So, do we need uh, to have some experimental or research work in uh, this area also in order to do, do a research? In, in order to do review paper? In review paper, ex review research is not experimental research. It is just the trends that uh, you can observe in a particular area. So, what types of trends is going on? Okay. okay. So, this is not experimental research. It can, cannot be considered as experimental research. Okay. Sir, I have one more question. 
so in various conferences we find so many themes and sub themes uh, which are related to our subject but uh, necessarily we have not worked on it we have not uh, researched on it so can we uh, which type of paper can we frame to uh, participate in such conferences basically you need to just uh, get an idea which is important okay not necessary to just write a theoretical paper and just try to uh, increase the number okay you just try to develop an idea which you think it is important then start writing your think yourself what you can uh, write on that particular aspect that means that type of paper will be also considered as a review paper because we have not worked on it yes yes this uh, review paper means you are just collecting uh, all the relevant this literature on a particular subjects and then you are organizing the reviews in a different themes and whatever you have at the beginning of the writing of review paper but you have you decided to inquire if you are able to do it you are just established it then it is it is a, it, it is a good uh, uh, review paper i think Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, our chief guest, Professor Mursalim, yes, Professor, sir, Officer Mohammad Mursalim, kindly address our participant. And I audible, yes. sir. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much, Fatima. Really, it was very informative uh, lecture given by Muhammad, Dr. Muhammad Nazim, and it, it was very, very informative. It uh, covered all the aspects of uh, um, the art, how to write a research article or review article. It was a really very good lecture. I uh, appreciate very much. And uh, I really congratulate Dr. Muhammad Nazim to give such an excellent lecture on, you, on this. And it is also very important to the learners, to our research scholars. Uh, actually, our research scholars, they uh, bluntly they write a paper and send to any journal without thinking that whether the journal belongs to whether without consulting any aim and scope of the journal. This is also very important. Whatever your topic is, which topic you are writing a paper, you must, before submitting the paper, you have to consult, you have to decide which journal you want to submit. And that journal, you must consult the aim and scope of that journal, whether that journal accepts your work on on your topic on particular topic this is very important also and also uh, you must be very careful about choosing the journal because there are a lot of fake journals in the market and they are claiming shamelessly impact factor high impact factor just to attract innocent people and they are very a lot of uh, uh, is fake journal, so you must be careful also. And there are very uh, popular uh, and uh, well known databases. You have to consult the journals from those databases, for example, the Web of Science, Scopus, and uh, also this uh, we have a UGC journal list. Uh, so, there are very, very few points. Uh, be, just beside writing a paper, suppose you follow all the guidelines to prepare a paper, but you have to also select a suitable journal. Otherwise, you will send and they will return after a few days or after a few weeks. And your time, your time will be very useless. Uh, so just before submitting, you also have to, you have to consult the journal very good and, uh, otherwise um, what can i suggest it, it was a very really, very good lecture covering all the aspects of uh, research paper writing skills and so on so uh, if any audience want to ask me any question i can answer that particular question if participant have any queries 
प्रोफेसर मोहम्मद मुर्सलीन लेकिन आस्क पार्टिसिपेंट हेलो यस यस मैम थैंक यू वेरी मच सर फॉर द वंडरफुल टू डेज वर्कशॉप सर आई हैव टू क्वेरीज द फर्स्ट वन इज इज इट पॉसिबल टू पब्लिश अ पेपर हुज डेटा वाज कलेक्टेड टू इयर्स बैक actually for data collecting two years back is really very uh, what can i say uh, because every day data are changing so you have to be careful you have to before before submitting you have to check whether such uh, data have been already used before you submit your paper or there have been in two years there have been a lot of development so you have to be careful before using two year old data actually sir um, i have done one research during my master degree mm -hmm. on online uh, learning experiences of post graduate students their challenges and uh, support system so i think this online learning is since it's uh, progressing uh, from the covid pandemic onwards so i think the data are still relevant but during that time i didn't have any exposure how to do publication but now as i'm also a research scholar and i'm uh, in first year so I, now i want to publish that paper so sir is it possible to publish that one now sir of course it is possible you can you can you have to choose you, first you can prepare the uh, research article according to the uh, advice given by dr mohammad azim and uh, covering all the aspects and then choose the journal uh, and also you you have been using the references there in your uh, research uh, go through those references and try to submit your work in the recent uh, journal uh, of the references which you have used in your work okay so sir in that case um, shall i uh, include the references when i uh, wrote the dissertation or shall i also include the recent one also try to include the recent one okay thank you sir Yes, sir. I have one more query, sir. Can we still submit a paper for publication which has been already uploaded in online repository like SSRN? Yes, sir. sir yes, I have yes, uploaded yes. that paper, yes. my online learning experience, uh, postgraduate, that one dissertation paper in SSRN, but it has not been published in any journal. In any journal. Okay, you can submit in some journal, and you you have to uh, uh, give the reference of that if that uh, publication. Of because there are there are several journals i don't know about the science and social science but in science uh, in, in art and social science but in science there are some journals which ask you whether it has been uh, published as a open manuscript sometime in archive and etc mm -hmm. uh, before final publication people publish their work just in in the preprint form so you have to give the reference of that preprint also okay so thank you so much sir thank you sir thank you so much anyone anyone else ha zara isha wo maghrib ka time bhi ho raha hai thoda okay okay sir. ओके सशाल है प्रेजेंट में बोलो थैंक्स यस ओके यस सर प्लीज 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 कॉल इट
Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Now is the time to end our workshop. I would like to express my gratitude to all the esteemed speakers, namely Professor Mohammad Mursalim, renowned mathematician and former chairman, Department of Mathematics, ANU Aligarh. Professor Rashid Nihal, Department of English, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. Uh, Professor uh, Mohammad uh, uh, Nazim, Department of Library Information Science, Aligarh Muslim University. Uh, for their presence and contribution to make this online two-day online workshop a great success. I also extend my gratitude to all the participants for their active participation and grace that workshop. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. So we can leave now? Yes, sir. You can. Thank you so much, sir. OK, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Shall I end the meeting from my side? Very nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very nice and we enjoy a lot. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you.